vaccination effort are answering some of your biggest questions. 7 Eyewitness News holding a town hall on issues like vaccine sign up and distribution. One of those questions we got on Facebook centered around whether people could be allergic to the vaccine or if other allergies they have could put them at risk for reaction. Allergies to foods, to antibiotics, to other medications uh, are not a contraindication for this vaccine. It, and you're not going to get an allergic reaction just because of that. Doctors say if you've ever had a severe allergic reaction, you should talk to your doctor before getting that shot. If you missed our town hall but still have questions about the COVID-19 vaccine or the pandemic in general, we'd love to hear from you. You can submit your questions to us using this page on our website. Just click the coronavirus tab at the top of your screen. As soon as today, Johnson & Johnson could receive emergency authorization to distribute its COVID vaccine. And once that happens, things are expected to move quickly. The FDA Independent Advisory Committee planning to meet today to review the company's vaccine and vote on whether or not to recommend its use. Then it could be granted approval as early as this evening. Distribution could happen next week. White House officials say states will receive around 2 million doses. Johnson & Johnson expects 20 million doses could be ready by the end of next month. At 6.05 happening today, the House will vote on the president's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. It partly includes $1,400 stimulus checks for millions of Americans, enhanced unemployment assistance, funding for small businesses, and increased support for vaccines. One item that won't be in the Senate version is that $15 federal minimum wage hike. The Senate parliamentarian ruled against that. Meantime, USA Today is asking people how they would spend that proposed $1,400 relief check. Families they spoke with explained the money would help keep them from being evicted, nursing, help nurse family members back to health, and help keep their businesses afloat. But in a poll of over 100 people, credit and other debt was the top answer about where that stimulus check would go. That's closely followed by utility bills, rent, mortgage, and medical expenses. Coming up, it's a creative and unique way. One high school is keeping band practice going safely. Plus, a new online tool that could help you get a vaccination appointment close to home. Plus this. You just literally, like, fall apart. It's a terrifying phone scam targeting parents, making them think their kids are in harm. Wait until you hear this, and then we're going to tell you how you can tell if it's real or not. And let's take you live to Kenmore this morning. That's where Taylor Epps is. She's showing us how one local restaurant that's known for hot dogs is trying its hand at fish fries. And from what we hear, they are pretty good. It's 607. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News. Welcome back to 610. Here's what's good to know before you go. President Biden will visit Texas today with a dual mission. He'll be surveying the damage the state suffered from an intense winter storm while also encouraging Texans to get vaccinated. This will be his first trip to a major disaster site as president. He's expected to visit a food bank in Houston and meet with local leaders discussing storm relief efforts. Jobless Americans can now keep collecting unemployment benefits even if they turn down work over safety concerns. The U.S. Department of Labor just expanded the program. This new rule says you can stay eligible if you attest the job offered doesn't meet COVID-related safety standards, including mask wearing, physical distancing, or supplying PPE. The CDC has a new search tool for COVID-19 vaccines. Vaccinefinder.org shows approved providers near you. All you have to do is enter your zip code and a list of nearby pharmacies will pop up. It also shows if a location has doses in stock. The website, though, is not fully comprehensive. Many mass vaccination sites are not yet listed there. At 611, Aaron Mikowski tracking a warm up for us. That's right, it's cool right now. You're going to find temperatures in the mid-20s, 25 degrees with partly cloudy skies. Winds out of the west at 5 miles per hour, but pretty nice this afternoon if you're going to grab some takeout or grab a fish fry. Mid-30s around lunchtime with abundant sunshine, mostly sunny around dinner time with temperatures near 40 degrees. Aaron, thank you. New this morning with the warm up and the rain on the way for the weekend, a lot of people could be getting ready for some flooding near or in their home. We still have a lot of snow sitting around from earlier this month and as the temperatures reach 50 this weekend, expect a lot of it to melt and possibly overwhelm your draining system seep into your basement. That's why we're talking about it today. 
biggest thing is property damage down in a basement. Finished basements, it'll, it's the easiest way to ruin your carpets. If you have floors down there, anything personal, it's it only takes about an hour for it to fill up an entire basement floor of rainwater. Depending on how hard it's raining, it could be even faster. And it is a major bummer. Coming up in our next half hour, we're going to find out what you can do to help prevent that from happening to your home ahead of those warmer temperatures that we're getting this weekend. Meantime, another sign spring is on the way. The Edward M. Cotter Fireboat back in the Buffalo River, breaking up the ice and the snow. This is the Cotter's second time on the water this season, but of course, it's been breaking up ice, Ed, for more than 120 years. 612 on your Friday, as if we didn't have enough to worry about during this pandemic. Now you need to be on alert for a new kidnapping scam that's making the rounds. So, all new for you this morning, our consumer reporter, John Matarese, is speaking with two women who became targets. So you don't waste your money. There's something wrong. Diane Peters wants everyone to know about the phone scam that still terrifies her. I want you to get inside your car right now. That's a recording of a man claiming he had kidnapped one of her two daughters. And if police found out, he would kill the 20 something woman. Here, I told you to wait and I told you to keep your mouth shut. I was picturing my one daughter with the gun to her head and, you know, thinking somebody's telling her she needs to give us money. The caller wanted $500 wired to Mexico to set her free. I know exactly where you live and if you say something, I'm going to hang up the phone and I'm coming inside your house. And you just literally like fall apart. What makes a scam so effective is the way they keep you on the phone when they're sending you out to get gift cards or to an ATM for cash. They make sure you don't call friends, family, or the police. I answered and it was uh, one of the kids crying. A few weeks back, Natalie Bruiser got a similar call, but in both cases, their daughters were home safe and knew nothing about the call. It's called the virtual kidnapping scam. All you can do is be aware of it, so if you get a call like this, Let's get in the car. you know to say no, and instead check with your son or daughter who is probably home safe and sound. It could happen to anybody, and it was so real. Please say the caller doesn't even know your child's name, but is so convincing. You think they do, so always don't waste your money. I'm John Mattery, 7 Eyewitness News. Uh, yeah, that is terrifying, okay. John. Thank you for that heads up. This morning, we're continuing to take you around western New York, finding out who's serving up that favorite Friday fish fry. One local place known for putting to together delicious hot dogs is adding fish to the menu now, and all new for you this morning. 7 Eyewitness News reporter Taylor Epps live for us at Frank's Gourmet Hot Dogs in Kenmore, explaining how they're preparing for a fish fry rush. Hi, Taylor. Good morning. Edding morning. We made it to another Fish Fry Friday, and this week we're talking about the delicious beer battered fish fry here at Frank's Gourmet Hot Dogs. And as you can see from this sign, they are limited to takeout only because of the pandemic, but despite that, they're still seeing huge success just two weeks into Lent. They start taking orders on Monday and usually sell out by Thursday. When you call, you get a designated time to pick up your order. That way, they are, there aren't big crowds of people waiting around. Of course, they specialize in hot dogs, but in the spring, it's the fish that keeps people coming back. And owner Paul Trippy says it's all because they get fresh, fresh cod delivered every Friday morning and all of the sides and sauces are made fresh in house. Workers spend all day Friday cooking and getting orders out to customers. It's a great time of year for their business as they've been surviving on takeout only for a year now. It's pretty much what we've been used to uh, working on a food truck for the last seven years. But uh, for us, um, we have it down pretty efficiently and we're able to deliver uh, pretty much almost 500 fish fries a week now. And they're able to do all of that with a team of only five people. Trippy says it's a big undertaking, but they love to do this every single year. So to get your hands on a Fank fish fry, you got to place that pre-order super early. Trippy recommends you call first thing Monday morning. Each order is $15.99 and Frank's is open Monday to Saturday, noon to 8. For now, we're live in Kenmore, Taylor Epps, 7 Eyewitness News. Sounds good, Taylor. Now I just want a fish fry. <laughs> 6 16 a.m. Perfect. We'll check back in with you in a bit. Let's take a look at what's trending this morning. Singer Lady Gaga offering half a million dollars reward for the return of her two French bulldogs. Police say two men 
shot her dog walker, then stole her dogs. Lady Gaga's in Italy right now. Her dog walker's in stable condition this morning. Really terrifying. Hasbro is dropping Mr. and Mrs. from the classic Mr. Potato Head toy line. The toys are going to be rebranded as just Potato Head, keeping it gender neutral so kids can build whatever kind of family they want. Can we talk about how cute that adorable baby potato is? I have never seen that before, probably because I don't have kids, but how cute is that? The product comes with potato bodies and accessories to build a person. Hasbro's clarifying, though, while the brand is changing, the characters of Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head will still live on. They'll also be sold in stores. And parents, are your little ones obsessed with Peppa Pig? Well, they may soon be begging you to take them to the new Peppa Pig theme park. It's set to open next year at Legoland Florida Resort. It's going to be its own park separately ticketed from Maine Legoland. There's going to be rides, attractions, play areas and shows. You'll also be able to meet Peppa and her friends and a new photo sharing app is taking off. Listen to this. It's letting younger people experience something that all of us are familiar with disposable cameras. So you take a photo, but you have to wait until the next day for it to quote unquote develop. So the end result is a more authentic hmm. looking photo without filters and then you share it. That's kind of cool. It is cool. Uh, disposable cameras were what everybody used, you know? Uh, can I tell you a funny story? I actually found one in my parents' house right when they were moving from my bar mitzvah, which was, what, 25 years ago? Did you, did you I haven't like, yet. It? So no? I, I, no, but I'm going to. And I, it's kind of like a time warp, you know? You I go know. back into the early 2000s and you're like, oh my gosh. Remember when you would go to weddings and they'd be on the tables yeah. or the prom? They'd be on everybody's table? Well, now so many times they're using, uh, what's the, the Polaroid yep, cameras, yep, yep, right? Yep, yeah. Which is still kind of cool. I like that. Very cool. uh, also cool, this morning, a high school in Washington found a creative way to rehearse in person. Look at this. The students are rocking out together inside individual pop-up pods, those green tents. So they zip into their personal tents. Huh. They're six feet apart. It's a unique solution that's now getting national attention. The thing is, they're able to play in person and they're able to create, yeah. which is something that they haven't been able to do for what, a year now? That is so cool. It's a really good idea. Yeah, smart. Now those are the little tents that parents usually use, right, Erin, when they're watching like soccer games and football games. Have you seen those out there? I definitely have seen them, uh, especially because we go to a lot of the uh, yeah, sporting right. events uh, for the high schools and uh, you see a lot of the parents in those little pods yeah. and I'm always like, oh, those are pretty neat. Um, haven't pulled the trigger on buying one, but uh, they certainly look pretty cool. And I know with my kids doing music from home, it would be great if they could uh, be back together with their band or their orchestra. So uh, it's nice to see that, uh, you know, we're thinking outside the box. I to can get tell them that Ed together. wants to say something. Let's take a look at your weather headlines for today. What's Go up? ahead, Ed. Uh, you know, I'm just wondering, do they really look cool or <laughs> are they just like a 2021 sign of what we're going through right now? <laughs> the little pods? Yeah. I think they're, they're a good idea. Yeah, it's, it's a good it's idea. windy and rainy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I just want more Brady playing the French horn yeah, area. No kidding. <laughs> Well, hey, you know what? For our morning meeting today at 9, you'll hear it most likely. <laughs> <laughs> Sunny and nice uh, today. You're going to find uh, temperatures will be up near 40 degrees this afternoon. A little rain and snow rolling through the area on Saturday, changing to all rain as the, you know, the day moves along. And then we're kind of going to see those showers taper off Saturday afternoon. Heads up on Sunday, highs near 50 degrees with strong winds and uh, some ice jam flooding, possibly Sunday into Monday. So if you're thinking about getting the car wash, well, Today's the day to do it. You want to get out there today. We'll have a good deal of sunshine. It'll be nice and dry. Saturday and Sunday, we will be dealing with some rain and possibly even some snow at times. So today is the day to get the car washed. Looking at the radar, all is quiet. Radar and satellite showing high pressure to our west building in. Some clouds still lingering across the southern tier, but those clouds will dissipate pretty quickly. 25 degrees right now. Winds out of the west at 5 miles per hour. The sun coming up in about a half hour. Official sunrise time today, 6.55. Uh, I should say 35 minutes. 25 in Buffalo, 20 in Niagara Falls, 21 in Jamestown. Hour by hour forecast showing the clouds going away. We'll have sunshine today. Clouds increase tonight with some rain and snow across the southern tier early on Saturday. Rain elsewhere and then just a few showers Saturday afternoon. Breaking down your forecast for today. Check it out. Low to mid 20s around 8 a.m. Mostly sunny skies, light winds, highs near 40 degrees this afternoon. You can see with the hour by hour forecast, uh, the rain coming in after midnight with the uh, 
Rain, snow, sleet mixture across the southern tier early on Saturday, changing to all rain and then just some spotty showers Saturday afternoon. Sunday, we're tracking some rainfall as well. Sunday, showers uh, arrive Sunday afternoon uh, in front of a cold front that's going to come through and drop our temperatures for Monday. As far as rain totals are concerned, uh, a tenth of an inch to two tenths of an inch of rain expected Saturday morning. Not a major event at all, but if you are getting your car washed today, you know, you'll be dealing with uh, some rain, of course, on Saturday. Partly to Mostly sunny skies today with highs near 40 degrees. Tonight, overnight lows in the low 30s with some rain and snow coming in after midnight. Tomorrow, we'll have the morning rainfall. Uh, temperatures in the low 40s, near 50 on Sunday with scattered showers. And then we get into Monday, mid 30s, windy with some ice jam flooding, uh, possibly Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Partly cloudy skies, low 30s on Tuesday, back in the 40s for Wednesday and Thursday. New data keeps coming in, so we'll continue to time out that precipitation for the weekend and of course keep an eye on those winds for Sunday which could lead to some ice jam flooding into Monday. All right, Aaron, we'll check back in for that. Still ahead, a morning curriculum controversy. Why the Buffalo Public School District is standing by its lessons that are getting some national attention. But first, the adorable way one daycare is honoring iconic African Americans during Black Black History Month. It's 623 on the start of a Friday. Stay with us. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News. Welcome back. There is a new exhibit in the Queen City helping celebrate both Black History and Women's History Month. It comes in the form of a black doll exhibit in the main branch of the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library, highlighting both black and Latina beauty looking to empower and inspire women of color. As a local leader, it's important for me, especially during Black History Month, to make sure that we are celebrating the skin that we are in as black and brown people and that young children have an opportunity to do so. The exhibit will be on display at the Central Library in downtown Buffalo until March 13th. A daycare center in Michigan also celebrating Black History Month in a really cute way. Look at these pictures. The owner there asked her class to dress up as a person of color who accomplished great things. Then they presented facts about their icon to the class. They're so cute. Two girls dressed up as civil rights activist Angela Davis. A two year old dressed up as singer Billie Holiday. One little boy as pro basketball star Earl Jones. Little kids dressed up just Ed, that gets me. You know, and such an important lesson for these yes. children as well. Look at them. Oh, adorable. Love it. Straight ahead, state leaders under pressure. The answers the state's top doctor gave while being grilled by local lawmakers. Plus, what you need to know today to keep your basement dry tomorrow. It's 627 on the start of a finally Friday. Stay with us. You're watching 7 Eyewitness News. Curriculum is the most powerful aspect of schools. Right now on 7 Eyewitness News, the Buffalo Public School District addressing its curriculum making national headlines. Why they say it's being taken out of context. Plus, working for the weekend warm up after a sunny Friday. Some rain's going to take over, though. Aaron's going to track all of that for us. And with that warm up comes a whole lot of melting snow. We're finding out what you need to do now to protect your home from flooding. And on this Fish Fry Friday, I'll show you how your support can really make a difference in our local community and even save lives. Now broadcasting and streaming live from Seven Broadcast Plaza, this is Seven Eyewitness News at six. Bottom of the hour on a finally Fish Fry Friday. We'll take you live to Kenmore this morning, show you Frank's Gourmet Hot Dogs, where even this hot dog manufacturer, they make really great delicious meals. Now they're creating fish fries. Taylor showed you what they're doing last half hour. We're going to check in with her in just a little while. She's going to talk about a life-saving fish fry coming up in just a couple of minutes. Good morning to you. Thanks so much for being with us here on 7 Eyewitness News. We are looking forward to the weekend and that Friday, Friday fish fry. That, how about the Friday fish fry feel, yeah. Ed? Yeah, there you go. But you know what, Aaron? The best part for me about today is not only the fish fry, but the fact that we're going to need some sunglasses for a little bit. Love to see that sunshine. Yes, a fantastic Friday forecast to grab your fish fry. Maybe uh, Edward will want to say something like that. Let's take a look at the radar. And uh, it's pretty quiet right now. We had uh, a few flurries overnight. Any of that snow is now well off to our east. Radar and satellite together showing a lot of breaks in the cloud cover as high pressure is building in. And that area of high pressure is going to be with us today, which means abundant sunshine. Certainly have the sunglasses handy. Sun's starting to come up right now, 25 degrees. Skies are starting to brighten. Winds out of the west at 5 miles per hour, 20 in Niagara Falls 
Falls 21 in Jamestown. So it's certainly a chilly start your day. So at the bus stop, once again, heads up, you could see some patchy ice out there. Plenty of sunshine as the kids are coming home today with temperatures near 40 degrees. Thank you, Aaron. This morning, the pressure is building on Governor Cuomo and the state health department as health commissioner Dr. Howard Zucker answers questions for the first time about that bombshell nursing home report. That report claimed the Cuomo administration purposefully withheld nursing home deaths related to COVID-19. State lawmakers repeatedly pressed the commissioner about the cover up. They say the March 25th executive order allowing COVID-19 positive nursing home residents to return to their facilities brought in the virus, but Zucker disagrees. They died because they got the virus in a nursing home. It is troubling to me that we keep going back to an issue where all the data has shown, not just New York, but across the country, that this is not what brought the infection into the nursing homes. Zucker says the increased spread in the community during that time is what actually resulted in a rise in cases in nursing homes. Meantime, a well-known local businessman is accused of breaking COVID-19 protocols. A former employee at Russell's Steaks, Chops and More and Salvatore's Grand Hotel is suing Russell and uh, Russell Salvatore, rather, and Mark Yorgi. The employee claims he was fired after he refused to work with Yorgi, who allegedly stayed on the job after testing positive for COVID-19. Salvatore calls the lawsuit, quote, crazy, and says the employee was fired based on performance, not because of these claims. School officials in Buffalo are clarifying part of their curriculum that deals with the Black Lives Matter movement, and it comes after it made national headlines. The Emancipation Curriculum was implemented this year. It's framed by Black Lives Matter, guiding principles and the goals to empower students. Well, a Fox News article recently criticized that curriculum, saying the district is telling students all white people play a part in perpetuating systemic racism. The associate superintendent says that was taken out of context. But what uh, I'm afraid has occurred here is that we have had uh, a decontextualization of the actual article itself. We've pulled out one phrase that would be very sensational. The quote came from an article written by a sociologist that's part of the district's curriculum. Morrell says the reason it was used was to get students to think critically about what they're reading. Historically, we know that we've been marginalized in these spaces. So we are really just trying to piece together the whole quilt of human experience in our curriculum and deliver that. Morrell says all material is grade level appropriate and teachers played a role in creating it. She says teachers can also choose when to use that content in their lessons. At 635, there's a new project designed to help children if their parents are arrested. The Osborne Association is teaming up with the Buffalo Police Department, implementing new procedures supporting kids who may be traumatized, seeing a parent being taken away by police. Over the summer, officers will be part of a five-hour training program learning about childhood trauma and learning about practices on how to minimize it. Osborne uh, had been working for several decades with children of incarcerated parents and really observed that over those years, one of the most trauma-inducing factors in the lives of children of incarcerated parents was being present when their parents were, were arrested. Some new practices will include simply not arresting a parent in front of kids when possible and providing arrangements for that child. New this morning, Western New Yorkers getting ready for some possible flooding this weekend with the warm up and the rain that's expected. You don't want all that snow outside your home to melt and land in your basement. Could leave you some costly damage that a lot of us have experienced before. So what can you do now to make sure your home will be protected? Check the age of the sump pump. Some pumps are the one thing that you want to change proactively instead of reactively before you get a big mess. Check your ages, make sure your crocs clear, make sure you're ready for when it all starts melting. The average life expectancy of a sump pump about 10 years. They say consider replacing it after about seven and if it's making strange noises or runs constantly, those are also signs you might need to have it replaced or looked at. Ed. Also new for you this morning, the Broadway market is getting ready to bring back Easter shopping. Buffalo Mayor Byron Brown says more than 50 vendors will return to the market this year. Beginning a week from tomorrow, vendors will be open daily through April 3rd. That's the Saturday before Easter. Anyone attending the market will need to wear a mask and socially distance.
Straight ahead, managing the pressure. People are really starting to not be able to handle the whole situation of the pandemic anymore. We're going to look at one way teenagers are helping one another cope with the pandemic. But first, Sabres fans could soon be back in the Key Bank Center. We'll tell you when and what you need to do to get in the door. But first, at 637, Aaron's tracking that warm up for us. That's right. We're going to see mostly sunny skies today with highs near 40 degrees. Some rain showers, maybe mixing with some snow early on Saturday, near 50 on Sunday. Big warm up on the way for the second half of the weekend. 640 on a Friday. Here's what's good to know before you go. Hyundai recalling 82,000 electric cars around the world. The vehicle's batteries need to be replaced after 15 reports of car fires. No one was hurt in any of these fires, and the fires were outside the United States. This recall, though, is one of the most expensive in history. On a per vehicle basis, the average cost is $11,000. It'll cost Hyundai about $900 million to get this done. The Black Lives Matter Foundation expanding its financial relief fund now at three million dollars. The foundation helps support black families who are struggling in this pandemic. It plans to give out thousand dollar grants to three thousand people. To apply, visit blacklivesmatter.com. Sabres fans can be back in the stands in just a few weeks. The team announcing fans will be allowed back inside Key Bank Center on March 20th, which is just three weeks from tomorrow. All fans will have to test negative for COVID-19 72 hours before puck drop. Overall capacity will be capped at 10%, and we know that, of course, the Sabres lost 4-3 in overtime last night to the Devils. Coming up here after the break, a math tutor gone viral. Why this 88-year-old teacher says she never wants to retire. God bless her, but first at 641, some breakfast for your brain. Welcome back everyone. All new this morning, another side effect of the pandemic is a growing problem of loneliness, Ed, that's getting worse for a lot of people. The stress of living through a screen and being isolated from peers, hitting young people especially hard. So this morning, Asher Karashi takes a look at the one resource teens are turning to to help manage the pressure. I'm like, I had been the person that my friends kind of go and talk to when they're like, something's on their mind or something's happening. For the last three years, Mia Hutchinson has used her gift of listening to counsel her peers. I did like six months where I just wrote emails. And then over the next two and a half years, I've just been on texts and calls. Hutchinson is one of about 100 volunteers for Teen Line, a peer-to-peer -peer hotline started more than four decades ago. Hi, this is Teen Line. I'm Emma. What's your name? Teen Line was started in 1980 by a group of mental health professionals who realized that when teens were struggling, they turned more readily to their peers than they did to the adults in their lives. I'm here to talk about whatever is going on. This video provided to us by Teen Line gives us a glimpse into what the operation looked like before the pandemic. On a typical night, we usually have have about 10 teens and they're supervised by three to four adult mental health professionals. Okay, so what's been going on? It's now done completely remotely. The callers that I've been getting just feeling like they're all alone and like they have no one to talk to because they're just not able to see anybody in real life. A new report from Harvard University helps answer the how are you doing question when it comes to teens. It suggests 36 percent of Americans are experiencing serious loneliness during the pandemic. This included 61 percent of young people aged 18 to 25. About half of lonely young adults in the survey reported that no one in the past few weeks had taken more than just a few minutes to ask how they were doing in a way that made them feel like the person genuinely cared. What's going on tonight, Anthony? We've seen increases in depression, in suicide, in anxiety, and just an overall um, kind of despair in a lot of ways. Even more alarming, according to the CDC, mental health related ER visits by 12 to 17 year olds spiked 31% in 2020 compared to the same time last year. My last couple of shifts, I've had just only suicide calls and like active suicide calls. And it kind of is just showing that like people are really starting to not be able to handle the whole situation of the pandemic anymore. It's easy to forget that Mia Hutchinson is only 17. If it's really, really bad, I'll just like take a break, like for five minutes. Ask her how she's doing, and she'll tell you she leans on her fellow listeners as well. I usually am able to get my support just from the other people who are in the Zoom room, which is 
just so lovely that I can have just like that immediate help with me at all times. Teens supporting teens in tough times. I'm Asha Qureshi reporting. You know, this pandemic impacting everybody, and sometimes we forget about those younger teenagers. They obviously need to have those conversations. So have those talks with your kids at home as well. I love that program too, Teens Helping Teens. Also new this morning, a group of famous men want more support for women during the pandemic. 50 male celebrities signing a full page ad 